Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for telling my dad I'm not living in my sister's shadow. I'm 15F, and I live with my dad and stepmom. My dad had a daughter named Molly, but she passed away when she was six years old, about nine years before I was born. Now, I've never had anyone close to me except my mom's dad, who I wasn't really close with, so I don't really get how long it takes to heal after losing someone like that. But here's where it gets complicated. Sometimes, my dad accidentally calls me Molly instead of Charlie, which is my name. He always catches himself and corrects it, so it's not like I get mad or anything. But the thing that really makes me feel weird is when we're in public or around people, and he talks about Molly, and they offer me their condolences like I lost someone. It makes me feel guilty, like I'm taking sympathy that doesn't belong to me. Things started getting worse a couple of years ago. When I was 13, my dad gave me a locket that used to belong to Molly. He had it resized to fit me, and I thought that was really sweet. I was planning to put a picture of me and my best friend Siobhan in it, but when I opened it, there was already a picture of Molly inside. My dad said I wasn't allowed to take it out. It felt a little off, but since it was Molly's locket, I let it go. I still wear it, but it's weird knowing I can't personalize it at all. Then came his work Christmas party last year. He introduced me to his co-workers, and a few of them looked super confused and said, I thought your daughter passed away. It turns out my dad hadn't even mentioned me to them. He'd only ever talked about Molly. That hurt. It felt like he was ashamed of me or like I didn't matter enough to even exist in his world. When I brought it up later, he brushed it off and said that wasn't the case and we just dropped it. Fast forward to my birthday last year. We were supposed to go to Six Flags, but my dad spent a bunch of money on a custom gravestone for Molly that he put in our backyard. So, instead of Six Flags, we just went out for dinner. I didn't say anything at the time, but I was pretty disappointed. Now, here's where things really hit the fan. My birthday was at the end of September, and a little before that, my dad asked if I still like Swishmallows. I've been collecting them since last year, so I was like, yeah. I even mentioned that they had a Hello Kitty collection, because I'm obsessed with Hello Kitty, especially Kiromi. He nodded, so I figured he got the hint. But when I opened my birthday present, it was an ear Squishmallow from Winnie the Pooh. I was confused because I've never once talked about that movie with my dad. But I didn't want to seem ungrateful. So I said thanks and made a little joke like, guess we missed the Hello Kitty ones. And then my dad said, Molly loved Winnie the Pooh, and I thought you'd rather have this one to feel close to your sister. That was it. I couldn't take it anymore. I snapped and yelled, I don't have a sister. My dad got upset, stormed off to his room, and didn't talk to me for the rest of the night. I felt bad for yelling, but I'd reached my breaking point. My stepmom later told me I was being a bitch, and that it was just a stupid toy, but the thing is, it wasn't just about the squishmallow. Everything in my life revolves around Molly, and I couldn't handle it anymore. I apologized to my dad the next day, but things haven't been the same since. He barely talks to me, and I'm terrified he hates me now. Some things people keep asking about. Molly didn't die nine years ago, it was nine years before I was born, so it's been over twenty years since she passed. My parents are divorced and I visit my mom every other weekend. She had a drug problem, but she's doing better now, and we get along great. She's both mine and Molly's birth mom, and she's never made me feel bad about anything related to Molly. My stepmom has her issues, but she's never really insulted me like this before. I was mad at her for calling me a bitch, but she's not constantly bullying me or anything like that. I don't know if my dad ever got therapy or talked to anyone about Molly's death, and I don't know how she passed. I tried asking him once, but he got really emotional, so I haven't brought it up again. I'm planning to talk to my stepmom before I sit down with my dad so she can understand where I'm coming from. I'm not glad this happened, but I'm relieved I finally got it off my chest. I just hope my dad can understand me too. AITA for selling out my grandma's secret recipe. My grandma was this absolutely amazing baker and she had this super secret cake recipe that she created herself. It had some unusual spice combos in the cake and frosting, making it taste unlike anything else. Every time we had a big family gathering. That cake was the star of the show, like the dessert everyone went nuts over. A couple of years ago, my grandma got sick, and she decided to pass down the recipe so it wouldn't be lost with her. She offered it to any of her kids or grandkids who wanted it, but weirdly enough, I was the only one who actually asked for it. I don't know why no one else stepped up, especially since there are other bakers in the family. Anyway, after she passed, I became the one who made the cake for family events, and people were happy that they still got to enjoy it. At the same time, I started making cakes on the side, at first just for friends and family, then through word of mouth, and soon enough, I had a little side hustle going. My cake business really started to pick up right before the pandemic hit. 
Since I was getting more orders than I could handle in my tiny kitchen, I made a deal with a friend who owns a catering business to use her professional kitchen. She was struggling a bit because of COVID, so it helped both of us out. Here's where the drama kicks in. My cousin Jane found out that one of my best-selling cakes was the cake, Grandma's Secret Recipe. And she flipped out. She accused me of selling out on Grandma's legacy, especially since I kept the recipe to myself. Now she did ask for the recipe late last year, but I told her no. I reminded her that Grandma had offered it to all of us before she passed, and Jane just didn't bother to ask for it back then. Recently, Jane's been struggling. She lost her job and decided to try selling cakes too, but let's just say it's not going well. Her reviews are bad, and no one's recommending her business. Now she claims the only reason I'm successful is because of Grandma's recipe and my access to a professional kitchen. The kitchen definitely helps, but here's the thing, I'm also good at what I do. Jane, on the other hand, is not a good baker. She's great at cooking but terrible at baking. She doesn't follow measurements, she eyeballs everything, which works in cooking but is a disaster for baking. So yeah, her cakes aren't great. Now Jane's demanding that I either stop selling Grandma's cake or give her the recipe so she can sell it too. I refused and called her a hypocrite for wanting to sell the same cake after getting mad at me for doing it. When Grandma gave me the recipe, she told me that her one big regret in life was never opening a bakery like she always dreamed of doing. That's my dream now, and I think Grandma would love knowing that so many people are enjoying her cake. So, I say for keeping Grandma's recipe to myself and using it for my business? Update First off, I opened my bakery. I found this great spot near the main office park and commuter route into the city. We've been open since June and business has been fantastic. We sell all the usual bakery stuff, cakes, pastries, breads, buns. I also hired a cook who does breakfast sandwiches and wraps for the morning office crowd. Now, back to Jane. A few weeks after I opened the bakery, she stopped by. She apologized and admitted what I had suspected all along, she was jealous. She saw my success with cakes and thought she could do the same, but didn't know how to start her own food business. She was also frustrated because she'd always wanted to work in food, but hated the idea of working evenings and dealing with the stress of a high-pressure kitchen. So when I started doing well, she thought she could just jump in too, but it didn't work out the way she hoped. I apologized to her too for not wanting to share the recipe. I was worried that if she started putting out bad versions of Grandma's cake, it could hurt both of our businesses. After we cleared the air, I offered her an opportunity to join me at the bakery, but not with baking. Since she's much better at cooking than baking, I suggested she come in three days a week and offer a soup or stew of the day during the lunch rush. We had extra kitchen space, and soups really suit her style of cooking by taste. Jane loved the idea, and her soups were an instant hit. She got full creative freedom to make whatever two kinds of soup she wanted each day, and they were always delicious. The office folks loved having more lunch options, especially since there weren't many other takeout spots nearby. We expanded to have her come in every weekday, and she even started making a cold soup option for Saturdays. It's been a great arrangement, she gets to be creative and still have her evenings and weekends free. In the last few weeks, we've also started offering take-home dishes like lasagna or taco kits. I handle the bread and pasta, while Jane does the sauces and other prep. So far, they've been super popular. Jane's even tried baking again but quickly decided she just doesn't have the patience for. And honestly, I think she's happier focusing on her soups and other dishes. She hasn't asked for grandma's recipe again, and no one else in the family has either. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day, feel free to drop a comment if you got more to share.